I'm Brent Barnett on Brownfield, and this is Unlocking Potential, a content partnership with Advanced Agrolytics. Joining us now is Travis Kimmel, Director of Agronomic Technology for Advanced Agrolytics. Travis, thanks for being here. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Brent. Thanks for having me. Well, this month we're focusing on fall fertility planning, and you're coming into a critically important time of the year in terms of having conversations with growers about their fertility planning for 2025 and beyond. Now, with corn and soybean prices so low, what are the key points that you'll be emphasizing in these discussions? Yeah, so um, as we've been moving into into the month of August and and really working through fertility prescriptions, we like to start to work through those in the month of July and preparing, uh, you know, tonnage and pre-buying and things of that nature with our growers. And, you know, as we've as we as we've entered into this and the markets have continued to soften phosphate pri prices are still fairly high um and, and it's not a fun conversation by any means but as we look at this you know the things to emphasize is where is additional application of you know your 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 macros going to provide the most efficacy and so we really need to to, to focus in on where those acres are within that field area and how, and how we have some honest conversations about the economics of it. From the advanced agrolytics perspective, Travis, what is it about your methodology that makes these discussions different than just making nutrient recommendations? Well, Brent, as, as we've talked about in the past, it, it's, you know, we're, we are a holistic service offering. So, you know, it's, it's more than just nutrient recommendations. It's that synergistic effect of, you know, uh, plant density or planting populations from seeding prescriptions, as well as what we're seeing in the crop and field. And so, yes, you influence that some with nutrient recommendations, but then there's also the cultural practice side of this, you know, um, other, other things that we're doing in the field, um, from a management strategy standpoint that um, it all it all gets lumped in. So it's more than just the nutrient recommendation. Now, Advanced Agrolytics definitely works to provide a, a much more detailed, granular level of data analysis than its competitors. Why is this important for growers? Well, the biggest thing, and I see, as I see this from, from both a, a grower myself, as well as um, from the Advanced Agrolytics side, it's it's truly the data analysis and the understanding um, of performance over time. You know, as we've been um, working with growers over the last, in some cases, nine years, ten years, in some cases, you know, the amount of information that we have um, compiled um, and how you can look at this, then start to to in to insert how the growing season has interacted. You know, it's not just total rainfall, but really ET demand. Um, throughout the growing season, as well as receive rainfall. So start to get to a measure or level of stress in some of these environments and how our management strategy has influenced that crop or stabilized it over time. And so it's looking at a lot of folks want to concentrate on really just soil type. Um, we want to focus on all of those derivatives of elevation and how those influence key mechanisms of the plant and soil biology that influence that outcome. What's the advantage of the spatial analytics that you that you all provide? As you think about nutrient uptake, it's influenced heavily by moisture. And I've talked about that here um, with you in the past. You know, how these specific landscape attributes influence nutrient uptake, you've got to pay attention to. Back to our kind of our, our old adage of start with environment, isolate mechanism, and view yield as just the outcome. It's those first two pieces that you have to get a complete understanding of so that you can influence that outcome. And that's really what we want to focus on and help the growers and make a proper nutrient um, placement as well as seed as, as well. And regarding that nutrient management, could you just highlight the importance of that efficiency for the grower? Yes. And so, you know, as you think about, you know, efficiency, you know, areas closest to the water table, higher in organic matter. Um, well, that's where we're kind of the complete opposite of a lot of folks um, out there in the countryside, um, whether it be the retailer and or a private uh, or independent consultant. You know, those acres are most efficient 
Um, they don't require this as much nutrient because of, you know, increased water holding capacity, things of that nature that really influence that more efficient use of nutrient. It's the other acres, the more challenging acres are the ones that you really need to address. And quite honestly, that's the greatest opportunity for upside. Travis, what kind of long-term planning goes into nutrient placement? Well, and as I, as I reference back to some of these long-term relationships we've had with growers, as I've, you know, uh, observe this crop and managing both new customers um, to our organization in this year, um, some that I personally manage, as well as the growers that have been with me now for nine plus years, you know, in the same weather pattern, same county, I'll say, and even fields that border each other there's going to be two very different outcomes at the, when the combine rolls through this fall. And a lot of it comes to all the work that we've done over the last several years of getting those acres in a position to be, well, have the highest probability of success so that, you know, as we think about agriculture, it's cyclical, right? So we know that we're going to come into these, you're going to come into a period at some point, where, and it's not just at some point because they last for maybe maybe a couple growing seasons in this cycle. You're going to come into a period where these conversations around economics are going to be uncomfortable. They're going to be tough, and you're going to have no choice but to make concessions somewhere. We strive to the nth degree to get our growers in a position to where when we come on these times, you're in a much better position to weather through this storm. We've heard you discuss the importance of building weather resiliency in the crop. Tell us what it is about the advanced agrolytics methodology that helps build resiliency in the crop and why that's important. Yep. And so I, I talked about it uh, a couple a uh, couple questions ago, just around, you know, our core methodology. Start with environment, isolate the mechanism that you look to influence, and view yield as just the outcome. And at a high level, it's just that simple. Uh, pay attention to the known mechanisms and how um, how those are influenced, depending on where you're at in the landscape, and create a management strategy around it. Um, like I said, our most challenging acres are the most challenging acres out there, whether it is a sand or low organic matter, high slope clay knob. Those, as I see this in my time in the industry, those have been the most mismanaged um, that I come across. Those are the acres that to be quite honest, we don't fully understand or appreciate the true upside potential in those environments. And in some cases, we want to abandon those or we manage to a lower production level. And I cannot stress enough that that is where a lot of our upside potential lies. And it's all in how you manage the crop to set that acre up differently. And so, um, again, um, we're, we are almost a polar opposite of much of the industry and in how we approach our man the management strategy. But, um, you know, we've proven it time and time again, year in and year out, where um, the crop that we have built in a lot of these cases weathers through those stressful periods of the growing season much better to where, you well, you're insufficient. With current commodity prices, you know, growers might be reluctant to commit to changes to their fertility practices or to long-term strategies. What do you say to growers facing today's tough farm economy? Um, the biggest thing is, you know, uh, again, and we're and we're in these conversations with our our growers today of, um, you know, where can we where can we choose to um, cut back? Where is it not going to hurt us? And really utilizing our tools. You know, we talked about spatial analysis earlier. You know, our we we produce an enterprise report that looks at well, I'm going to say the farm holistically from, you know, as plant, you know as planted products, uh, performance by environment, um, the operation and bucketing and really bucketing those, um, I'm going to say the acres um, across the operation into, well, let's just say three major buckets, if you will, so that you can kind of categorize and then organize these, these environments to where know what you want to do um, to get the best possible outcome there and then help work create a management strategy around it. And so, um, you know, with the, today's tough uh, farming economy, there's going to have to be some, some tough decisions made on how to, to best utilize dollars. Travis, always great insights. How can growers get more information from your team? Well, you can certainly uh, go to our website, uh, www.advancedagrolytics.com. 
Um, follow us on social media um, to get in touch with your closest uh, precision agronomist. Again, that's Travis Kimmel, and we thank you for joining us on Unlocking Potential, a content partnership with Advanced Agrolytics. I'm Brent Barnett, Brownfield.